Rabbit hunting is the sport in which the hunter or hunters uh, try to find and then eventually take a rabbit using uh, one of two methods, usually, usually hunted with dogs, but sometimes hunters will want to go out and just kick brush or just try to find them and scoot them out and then maybe get a shot at them. But I prefer to use beagles and hunt with a small group and we hunt both cottontail rabbit and hare, usually up in the Northeast Kingdom. So this is kind of interesting because I was in college at UVM and a buddy of mine went home for the weekend and came back to school on Sunday evening totally exhausted. And I asked, well, what did you do all weekend? He says, we were rabbit hunting. And I kind of looked at him and I laughed and uh, I said, rabbit hunting? What are you talking about? So he tried to explain it to me <clears throat> and uh, I kind of passed it off until uh, that winter break around just after New Year's in January, he invited me to come up to Barry and we were gonna go to their camp uh, up in the Northeast Kingdom and do a little rabbit hunting with his, his beagle, uh, Bucky. So I got up there and on the way up, it was, it was raining in, here in Bennington and then on the way up, it turned to snow. And by the time I got to Barry, there was almost a foot of snow on the ground. And from there, we proceeded to camp, which was on a normal ride, about 45 minutes, and it took us about an hour and a half. Uh, and we got into camp that evening, it was, and we warmed it up, and we got ready, went to bed. When we got up in the morning, the temperature was close to zero, and we went out, and where we went, there was some logging going on, so the loggers had, had uh, plowed the road, and the snow banks were about six feet high and I had to use snowshoes so I didn't have any of this gear so they got they had they gave me snowshoes so I had to figure that out for the first time and a shotgun which I didn't own and so we went in the woods and in a little while the dog uh, Bucky started a rabbit and he was run, he ran the rabbit he was barking on the rabbit and I remember looking behind this stump, not stump, it was a down, uh, down tree, and I saw these two ears just going like this behind the, behind the tree, and I go, was that the rabbit? And then not too long after that, I hear the dog is coming, and sure enough, he went right behind that tree, and that was the rabbit. So a field trial is um, a different format than just going out and hunting with your buddies and, and using your dogs and maybe a couple of their dogs or beagles. It's designed to, to judge how well the beagle is doing as far as tracking the rabbit, finding the rabbit, pursuing the rabbit, and the dogs are scored by judges based on how well they do. So it's set up in two formats, a 13 inch beagle and a 15 inch beagle, not to exceed either, either measurement. Uh, and the dogs are actually measured. They have a measuring stand and they'll, they measure the dog. And if it's 13 inches or under, it's in the 13 inch class. And if it's 15 inches or under, it's in the 15 inch class. The dogs are, are uh, usually, uh, there's two, two kinds of formats. There's a large pack format, which is usually run on hair, and a small pack format, which is usually run with five or six dogs at a time. Uh, sometimes seven, depending on the, how many entries there are. I've been in field trials where there have been up to 40 or more dogs in a, in a class, uh, say a 13 inch class, which is what I tend to run in. The judges will, there's a, a, actually a lottery system at the, in the clubhouse and you're assigned a number and then they call the number and then they, they set up the, what, they're, what are called packs. So you're in the first pack, second pack, third pack, or fourth pack, and the judges go through the packs. Uh, usually takes about an hour to two hours to 
judge a pack and they'll pick dogs out of each pack that they like. And the other dogs are uh, removed um, and they go home and that's it for them. Eventually they'll work their way through the dogs and they'll come up with a winner's pack and they'll run the winner's pack and they'll try to place the dogs as you know first, second, third, fourth or next best next best hound, the fifth place and then then they'll just order the other dogs. And it's it's an inter it's interesting in that you're running with dogs that you don't um, you're unfamiliar with. And and so it adds a whole nother aspect to beagling or beagle hunting. There's no shooting at the trials, however, the judges will fire a pistol over the dogs to make sure they're not uh, gun shy. Vermont has uh, two clubs that run field trials, both up in the north part of the state. Uh, New York has a number of clubs. Uh, New Hampshire has uh, clubs, Maine, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and then you can go out into the Midwest, Wisconsin, Michigan, and they're all over into the uh, southern states also have uh, beagle clubs. And a lot of the breeding for hounds or beagles comes from field champions, uh, which are determined by these field trials. A number of my dogs have come out of um, field champion bloodlines. So at the end of the trial, you're awarded ribbons and trophies for your places. So usually first place will get a blue ribbon, a bag, big bag of dog food, <laughs> and, uh, and a trophy. And some, some clubs will give trophies to you know, all four positions, but everybody gets a ribbon. Um, and that goes to, there, there are points awarded for each, each place, and those points uh, go toward uh, field champion status. So it's a, and you get to travel around. It's kind of fun. You meet some, you meet other, other uh, owners from from around the around the Northeast, um, and uh, you get to know some, some interesting people. I really right now I just prefer to run my dogs, enjoy them, and hunt with them. I've had a, about a dozen dogs in my lifetime, and every dog is it has their own personality. Uh, and their own way of doing things, believe it or not. My favorite dog was probably Bluey or Blue, uh, but my second favorite dog is one I have right now, and, I, and that's Brownie. And he is just full of energy. He is a very, very tough dog. Uh, he can run all day long. We've put a lot of miles on those dogs on a, on a hunting weekend, and he just, loves running rabbits. That's all he wants to do. He could care less about anything else. And and when you when you let him go, he just his he in his mind all he wants to do is find a rabbit. And as soon as he finds it, he wants to run it as hard and as fast as he can. And he's got a great personality. Um, and that's what's great about all beagles that I've had. Um, they all have great personality. They love you to death. They love people, and they'll do anything, anything for you. You're part of the pack. Rabbit hunting in Vermont is uh, typically runs from September to March, and that gives you a great opportunity to, you know, get out there when the leaves are are turning color and it's dry out, or you can go when the rabbits are turning white and you can get out there in the snow. So beagles. Uh, have the instinct to know what the rabbit smells like and when they find the rabbit in the woods they'll start tracking it or running it and the best part about that is they'll start barking and so the benefit of that is the hunter has kind of an idea a rough idea of where the rabbit is and where the rabbit's going. Rabbit hunting is, is exciting for me for quite a few reasons obviously it's exciting because it's challenging um, rabbits, as you know, are, are small games, so they, they need to hide in dense woods and to obviously go, to go find the rabbits, you have to go walking through those thick woods. And so it's extremely tough to find the rabbit, even using beagles. But when you do, you then have to figure out how to actually see them and shoot them. Uh, being in thick woods, that can be extremely difficult. Even if I go out in the woods, I don't care if I actually see the rabbit or 
get the rabbit. The most exciting part is using the beagles. To see and hear them working, trying to find the rabbit and running the rabbit is by far the best thing about rabbit hunting. To me, rabbit hunting is a, a good walk outdoors. You know, plus you usually have your buddies with you. And uh, six guys you've probably hunted with for 10, 10 years, 10, 5, 10, 15 years or so. So, and it's just actually a good good walk outside. And, and most people get so they like the music of a dog. It's exciting for me because I have generally, it's my friends, I go with my friends. I have a guy that I've hunted with for like 30 years now. And uh, I coached with him, coached sports with him over junior high there. And uh, he just happened to hit, strike into him when he was, didn't have a beagle, but now he's got his more than I got. And uh, we just have a super time. We go French Hollow. In the winter, we like to run here, so we we go to the Pru French Hollow area, and uh, you wear snowshoes, that's another good thing, you get good exercise. And generally you have, maybe sometimes you have a couple of buddies with you, but it's not quite as boring as deer hunting. Deer hunting, you just gotta sit still for hours, not good enough for me. You got a little more excitement in rabbit hunting. I, I started rabbit hunting actually before I even had a license because my dad wouldn't let me go to take a gun or anything. So I have an older brother and uh, my dad would go rabbit hunting about every weekend. He didn't have beagles then, we just had grade hounds and uh, we just go to Woodford and we had a camp on uh, that we used on the White Rocks and go there every weekend and he let us always take one friend with us. So it would be one of the guys I played sports with in high school, of course. <laughs> and and uh, we'd just stay for the weekend and then come back and then the next weekend we might go to another place or Woodford or something. My favorite places to hunt has to be uh, the Northeast Kingdom in Vermont, mainly up around, I guess, the Island Pond area. And the reason it's so great up there is there's uh, thousands of acres that's open for hunting. Uh, it's great, thick, dense, softwood area for rabbits. There's uh, a lot of dirt roads, logging roads, and very few people up there. And the best part is there's no cell service, so you can really disconnect from society, and just get out in the woods with your friends and family uh, and the dogs and just have a great weekend. I got into rabbit hunting, I think around the age of eight. And it's, it's a family thing. So my, my grandfather uh, grew up hunting. And so my father obviously grew up hunting as well with his, his friends and family. And so now my brother and I are big in, into it as well. When I was a kid, dad would bring me hunting, um, both to the Beagle Club, um, especially during the summer in the evenings or just on a random day in the summer. Um, and then in the winter time on weekends up to one of two hunting camps that he is a member of. I preferred going to the, um, the Beagle Club because I just really enjoyed being with the dogs. I think the animals are my favorite part of this tradition and the way that you teach a dog what to do and also see a dog kind of rely on their, on their instincts and to see how kind of nature unfolds in front of you. And then to get a chance to see um, a rabbit in the wild is really uh, exciting. It was always the thrill is you would try to predict where the rabbit's gonna cut across the little path in the woods or, or um, and then you count to see how long it takes the dogs to finally cross where the rabbit was and to see if they're following the rabbit correctly. And it's, um, it was a really nice way to be outside and in nature and to interact with animals and see animals. Um, and I think it led to my appreciation for uh, anim animals in general, but, but dogs more specifically. But I really love the, uh, the things that dogs can do. And, and I believe that they're really happy when they're doing a job.
Okay, so we're going to get the dogs ready. The first one out here is going to be Piper. And I'm putting <laughs> tracking collars on them. GPS tracking collars, we know where they are. We can get them back. So that's Piper. She's actually a 15 inch beagle. She's over 13 inches. But not by much. This dog is Callie. She's a five year old female. Piper's a puppy. She's about 15 months, 16 months now. Mr. Piper, come here. And this is Brownie. He's an eight-year-old male, 13 inch. He's full of energy. Boy. It's okay. We gotta go through this one every time. Good boy. Alright. Good to go. So they're all Three of them have tracking collars on, GPS, tells me where they are, how fast they're going, how far they've run, it gives me all kinds of information like that. Well, talking about funny stories, one day I was hunting with a buddy in the mill, and we were uh, in Peru, and we, were, we had a hare going in the snow in the winter, and uh, geez, I shot the hare. I said, holy cow, why'd they shoot that hare? Because the older I got, the less I wanted to shoot him, I just wanted to hear the run. So anyways, I shot this hare, it was beautiful, white, oh, he was a beauty. I, so when the, my friend came over, I said, geez, Bill, I said, I couldn't. I shouldn't have shot this thing. He said, what are you going, crazy, Pete? <laughs> and I just laughed, but it did kind of stick to me there about that. So some stories from the Beagle Club that stick with me in particular were one, one time we were there in the winter and it, was, it had snowed and we had brought Blue, who was the first dog that we got um, when I was alive. So dad had had a few dogs before I was born. And then we had Brittany and Bella, all three at the same time. And they had just had a really good run. They were um, totally exhausted and they came over and basically told us they were done. And we have these cool, these like leather leashes that, that split off so that they're all on the same leash together and we were trotting towards the exit of the pen. And like I said, it had snowed. And so I brought a sled. It was probably the way that dad bribed me to come um, was to let me bring a sled and sled down any of the hills that were there. And so I had this brilliant idea that I would sit in the sled and I would hold the leashes and the dogs would pull me all the way home. <laughs> and they did, it was really funny. Um, so that's one, one of my favorite 
uh, stories. Actually, so blue was kind of the exception to the beagles not being great in the house. He was wonderful and he was gentle and he actually, I, I have a couple of really fond memories of blue. One is that dad let me dress blue up in an outfit and he let me bring blue to school to be judged in a pet show <laughs> so we we trotted around the gym in a little circle of all the different pets that were all dressed up and i don't remember whether we won a prize or anything but um that he was so happy to just have the attention he was really a sweet dog i've been hunting now for 20 years and so there's a lot of stories built up and even stories that I heard uh, you know from my grandfather and father's age but I guess the one that really sticks with me uh, is not exactly funny it's funny to me now looking back but um, about 14 years ago my uncle and my father and I went hunting up up near Island Pond in Lewis we got in the woods and of course as I mentioned before it's extremely thick woods uh, but even when using dogs, the problem is you can't control where the rabbit goes. Uh, so if the rabbit decides it wants to run a mile in a straight line, it's going to run in a straight line and the dogs are going to follow. And as a hunter, you want to make sure the dogs are close by. So in this situation, my uncle took off after the, the rabbit and the dogs and it got to a point where it was too much snow, too much water and the woods were just so thick uh, that eventually he ran out of daylight, uh, got a little disoriented and basically stuck in the woods. So my dad and I were, were uh, at safety on the road, so we figured now it's time to go get the help of some game wardens. So we went back to the, uh, the ranger station, which normally would be totally empty uh, and we'd have trouble trying to find a game warden to help. But in this situation, uh, they were having their annual Christmas party. So we were able to walk in and not only get the help from the, the ranger, but we were able to sit by the, the wood stove, enjoy some conversation and have some nice hors d'oeuvres while my uncle was soaking wet in the middle of the woods uh, in, at 10 o'clock at night. So eventually we were able to, with the help of the uh, game worn work my uncle out of the woods and he got out just after midnight. Uh, so it's not exactly the funniest story, but it gives you an idea of, of what can happen uh, when you're out there rabbit hunting in this situation. All people and all dogs were, got home safe and we didn't get a rabbit. <laughs>